This is me about to experience what it's like to play for a team at the bottom of the football pyramid. And it just so happens to be one of their biggest games of the season. But how has this happened? Assington Stanley. Who are they? Exactly. Are a brand new football club playing at step seven in division five of the Essex and Suffolk Border League. After finishing second bottom last season, the club are looking to climb the leagues and they've asked me to help. Problem is, I've not played competitive Saturday football for over 16 years. We're going to find out the highs and the lows of setting up a new football team and see if I can still compete at this level. This football journey began when I went on trial at Ithmian Premier League side Cheson at the start of the season. They haven't come up to me yet, said anything, I'm still waiting. <laughs> you like meant to be playing? But it's fair to say it didn't go to plan. After getting zero game time, I almost thought my career was over again. But that's when Assington Stanley reached out to me. Six months of negotiations finally came to an end and Fabrizio Romano could utter those three famous words. Here we go. I officially had signed for Assington Stanley and was eligible to play in their upcoming match against the team two leagues above. Now all the paperwork was signed, it was time to meet the club chairman, Mark. So Mark, this is the home of Assington Stanley. What made you set up this football club? Well, it's through COVID really. I was just sitting around, loads of spare time on our hands. And I was just trying to figure out how to bring a community vibe back to the village and get people to socialise again. But that hasn't quite gone to plan as such. This is the bottom of the pyramid. Doesn't get any lower than this. No, it's no. proper grassroots. What obstacles have you come across? Loads. <laughs> <laughs> Loads. And obviously, you can't use the Essendon Village Hall because that doesn't meet the league requirements because you have to have three dressing rooms, all have to have showers and toilets. At this level, is is quite hard. So we find ourselves here at Mile End and... Just for example, being here, it costs £131 to play a home match. Wow. Because 86 quid for the pitch hire, then £45 for the referees on top of that. We've got very minimal funding, so it's all based on the players paying five a year for training, for games. Hence, that's how we're getting by. And what's the dream for the football club? Obviously, they're at the bottom. The only way is up. So yeah. where do you want this club to go? Well, it's nice to dream, isn't it? You know what I mean? There's... Stalking Wanderers have gone exactly. from the bottom all the way up to the exactly. National League. Exactly. I mean, you've just got to keep going, haven't you? Um, we'd like to get towards the Prem, Border Prem. What kind of players have you got here? We've got a good bunch. We've got some players that have played at a high level. And we've got a couple of youngsters that have just come out from youth football. So we've got a good mix of abilities. But together, they're all doing really well this season. We've got Jordan and Gary that run the team for me. So that saves a bit of hassle. Did you share this with a load of other teams? Yeah, whoever's booked in to play on the day. So I think there's a Vets team up here playing. Might get a game for them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the facilities like here? They're not too bad. They're basic. Yeah. They're nothing luxury, but <laughs> at high level, it gets the job done. So how do you actually set up a football club? To be honest, mine was all down looking on the FA website and going through the step-by-step -step instructions that they had on there. <laughs> so I had no experience in doing this. This is all just, just winging it, basically. How do you attract the players to come join the club? That was all done through social media. So you like to Twitter or X, as it's called now, your Facebook, Instagram, just putting out shout-outs. You know, new club, looking for players, come training. And this is where we've got. And what's the aim for the season? We want to win the league. We're level on points with Bentley at the moment. So today's game is a cup match That's right. against the team two leagues above. Are they pretty tasty? What are they like? They're in good form. They've only lost two this season, so we'll uh, definitely expect a tough game. But we beat the Oakley last in the last round from the same division, so. It is. It's the magic of the cup, isn't exactly. it? Was it the Tommy Thompson Cup? Tommy Thompson Cup, yeah. <laughs> There you go. The Tommy Thompson <laughs> Cup. Right, I'm going to go get changed. OK. I entered the changing room for the first time to meet my new teammates. The music was pumping and thankfully there was no initiation. I suited up in my new green jersey and prepared myself for my first game of Saturday football in over 16 years. The next step was to introduce myself to my new manager. First things first, Jordan, is it? Jordan or Gaffer, what do you prefer? Uh, I prefer Gaffer. But yeah. Is your first one. It's almost all <laughs> no, you want. no right. I'll play by the rules. I'll call you Gaffer. Right, so you are the manager. What are the biggest struggles at this level? So, consistency <laughs> is a massive one. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the lads want to go on holiday. You know, as you do, they're yeah. young, they want to enjoy it. Also, the financial pressure is massive, and unfortunately, the subs don't cover it. So, it's got to come from somewhere. So, it's massive the sponsorship from other people. And what kind of manager are you? I like to play attacking football, um, but obviously, you can only play with the cards you dealt, <laughs> um, especially at this level. 
we've got a great group of lads there. We've got a couple that play, used to play semi-professional football. Yeah. Um, because they're joining the army, they don't play very regular. So they've come to us, they enjoy it, there's no stress, and they score quite a few goals. What did Mark tell you about signing me? Well, he, <laughs> he said to me, he said, oh, he goes, oh, there's a guy called Curly. Yeah. He wants to get involved. Um, <laughs> And he said, one day he's going to give us a game. Yeah. And, and today's and that day. Today's that day. What are you expecting from me? I'm just thinking to get a couple of goals today. <laughs> yeah, I think he will. You know it's been 16 years since I played competitive Saturday I football. believe in you. It's all in the mindset. But already, I'm in a WhatsApp group. And what I love is that you've already sent out a team talk yeah. already. Why is that? So you're focused. So I want you to turn up. I want yeah. you to know exactly what you're doing. The key is to be consistent. Okay, so if I put the team out on a Thursday, yep. everybody knows their roles. Right. right. The people who are subs, they can sulk or they can get fired up. And occasionally people drop out, they'll turn up and they'll be like, oh, you're starting now. And all of a sudden the mindset's yes. Yeah. And I say to all of my subs, I said, when you get on, yep. prove me wrong. I said, I never want to be right. Do not prove me right on a Saturday, because if not, we're going to have problems. So I say, go out there, prove me wrong. And nine times out of 10, they have been this season. What I also love in the WhatsApp group is that you can't actually reply. Yeah. It's just you and Mark that can communicate. But you did throw out this week that if anyone needs some goldfish, yeah. then to let you know, and someone's taken the goldfish. There's a couple of people taking the goldfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Right, I hope I don't let you down, Gaffer. I'll be honest, at this point, I completely forgot what the pre-match text tactics were. But as we waited for the warm-up to begin, I thought I'd get to know some of my teammates. How long have you been playing for Assington Stanley? Since they started last year. So, what, almost two seasons now. What kind of goalie are you? Any good? I'm all right. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd bet on myself against any goalie. Yeah. What's the level like at Div 5 of this league? Crap, mate. <laughs> Crap. But it is what it is. We're a new team, so we're just yeah. trying to gel with each other. And we're doing pretty well this season, so. Is everyone in the team, like, mates? No, nah, no one was mates. Oh, really? No, nah, because it's a new team, we just got, like, the leftovers of every other team, and then try to make something of it. I think a few of the boys know Jordan, the manager, and he yeah. got a few players in this season, but. Would you enjoy playing at this level? I just play for the fun of it, mate. I just love football. I've got two questions for you. One of them, why are you suspended today? Well, push someone, didn't I? Did you? Yeah. Straight red? Yeah, straight red. Three game ban, is it? Yeah. Last what's, game, last game ban. What's, what's the fine? 55 quid, mate. Really? Yeah. And then the other question is, Jordan put in the WhatsApp group about some goldfish if anyone wanted any, and you, you've collected them, you're picking them up? Yeah, he's going to drop them off now, he's being a good gaffer, isn't he? So, <laughs> what um, happened to yours? Someone stole my fish. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you enjoy about playing at this level? So, I don't know, man, I reckon it's, the lads are nice, a good, good atmosphere, and football's football, isn't it? you got to love a game of football. So. How long have you been playing? Since I was five. <laughs> <So> <laughs> no, for <Asinton>. oh, Assington. <laughs> <laughs> This season, to be fair. Yeah. Most, most of the team knew. Have you played at a higher level? Uh, well, there's five divisions in this league, so I've played Division 1. Technically, it's a high level in terms of the football pyramid. Is there much of a sacrifice for you to play at this level in terms of the travelling? Oh, hang on. Oh, I think the hamstring's gone. Yeah, it's, that's tough. To get out past the misses as well every Saturday. No choice. Think, no choice. <laughs> Our time of booting the ball at the goal had come to an end as the warm up was about to get underway. My oh, calves are burning. I haven't run this much in years. Legs are burning. You a bit late? Nah, not me, bro. <laughs> Fashionably early. You know, for me. I had to do my, uh, my routine, make sure I score the goal. But... What's your routine? Turn up. <laughs> Turn up and score. Superstitious? Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't cross on the stairs, nothing. Magpies I always say hello. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Superstitious. Super, 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 super suspicious. Do you mean superstitious? Superstitious. Yeah, that's the one, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. All right, watch these socks all season. Oi! Oh, I swear to God. I ain't watched these socks all season. Oh, yeah, innit? Wow. Now all the superstitious chat was done, we moved on to some light stretching in a circle. One by one, we had to go in the middle and demonstrate a stretch. Uh, I can't think of one. <laughs> it's been a while since I've stretched anything, to be honest. As my brain tried to dig deep into the archive, this is the best I could come up with. Just a nice little groin one. Open those. Oh. Yeah. Just opening that gate, you know. Yeah, that does. 
<laughs> Just trying to loosen up the joints. <laughs> After what felt like the longest 20 minutes of running and stretching, there was still more running to come. Yeah. <laughs> getting done by myself. I can't think your position are here. God, still blowing. Yep. And then with my legs feeling like jelly, the balls came out to play. The gaffer's tactics yeah, were to right. give the players as many touches as possible before the game. I look so unagile. <gasps> as the gaffer watched on, I was keen to show off some delicate touches whilst trying to catch my breath at the same time. To say the pitch was bobbly is an understatement, but I did my best to try and keep everything under control. That is probably one of the longest warm-ups I've ever done. I am so out of it. 36, there's a reason why I don't play. Banter's good though, banter's good fun. The warm-up was done, so it was back to the changing room for the final instructions. Right boys, okay, there's gonna be one change from the start at 11. Okay, is gonna go to centre mid, okay, and then Stumble's gonna go to the right. And the referee today is young. Okay, don't go any back, okay? Encourage him when he gets it right. Like when he gets it wrong, he's leaving. Other team, they got LA, they'll slow warming up. I've watched a couple of them, they have a lovely thing on them. Okay, so the back four, anticipation today, will be key. But boys, I fancy, fancy this today. Yeah, all right, yeah, the end was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like <laughs> I'm on the bench. Here we go then for this Tommy Thompson Cup match between Assington Stanley of Division 5 and Gosfield United of Division 3. The opening 10 minutes were back and forth like a basketball match, with both sides having chances. Even this furry guy was enjoying the action. No, 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 that's good girl. The first big chance fell to Assington, but the strike sailed over the crossbar. Then, at the other end, the visitors opened the scoring with what can only be described as a scruffy goal. The Gosfield defender did his best to try and level the score up. Now, the Assington striker did tell me to delete this footage, but unfortunately, I just couldn't do it. Maybe he forgot to salute as a magpie on the way over. Fair to say the boys in green had the better chances of the first half. However, this would have definitely made it onto Showbo on Soccer AM. Whilst Assington came close again, the subs were going through a vigorous warm-up. This was the final shot of the first half as we go into the break 1-0 down. Do not want you walking back with your wrist. Just lose just that. All right? Okay. Boys, you're going to be still. When you talk time on the ball, find your wide bend to find the seat. There's too many times we've played the diagonals. When we do play it, it's lovely. But let's try and do that from centre half. Yeah, you're the only team out there who's trying to play football. They do two passes, they'll roll up into one of their women's, yeah? We're doing that, but, you know, we could be free to what? Should be free to what? Yeah, that goal they scored was sloppy. You're playing a team that's two divisions above you and trying to win the league. Yes? Yeah? That's what we're playing against today. Yeah, we've got the talent to bring on from the bench. I guarantee they go. Yeah, they've driven all the way through Braintree, they will try out. Keep going, keep working. Boys, you're all watching on the sideline? Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Bring me on, Douglas. The sits. No, yeah. shut up. Yeah, oh, you know, that's what you want. You want to to want to come on and change the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah you encourage that. Well, well, that's what I want to hear. I'm, it's true. We made our way back out onto the pitch, determined to start the second half on the front foot and came close to the leveller with this header. Whilst I practiced some keepy-uppies on the side. The visitor's next shot trickled past the far post and up the other end, this strike bobbled into the keeper, who also fluffed it. The first subs were being stripped and ready to make an impact, whilst I was told to start getting warmed up. Number six then tried his best to replicate Cristiano Ronaldo's famous Champions League goal. As the first few subs were made, I was told to strip off. Not literally, but just take my jumper off. I patiently waited for the ball to go out of play before receiving the instructions of go up top. Me, a striker? A position I've never played before? I lingered around the penalty area trying to make some runs across the goal to cause havoc in the box. I was strolling around the pitch like a lost lamb. Then my first touch was to try to pluck one out of the sky, which didn't quite happen. And then the second touch was equally pony. But nonetheless, I spent the 15 minutes I had on the pitch running around trying to make things happen. 
with very little success. However, our keeper was easily the player of the match, producing some brilliant saves. The full-time whistle went and the game ended in defeat for Assington Stanley. Who were they? Exactly. And pretty much ended any hope I had of playing competitive Saturday football, which to be fair, I had no plans to do anyway.